fertility doctor's warning about biotin, which you may not even realize you are taking. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and I get asked questions every single day about your body, your health, your fertility, and I am here to answer them and help you advocate for your own health even better. Today we're talking about a supplement called biotin. Now very few people go and think about taking biotin. Oh, I'm gonna go get some biotin today. But what's super interesting is that Many people are taking way too much biotin, and that can actually cause a problem when it comes to your fertility treatments. And it can have some negative impacts because it makes it harder for us. So this is a very quick video on something I wish everybody knew, especially if you have infertility, if you're getting any hormones tested, or if you're having any issues and hormone evaluation is a part of that, because biotin can throw things off. So first of all, let's start with what is biotin. Biotin is actually vitamin B7. So vitamin B7 is an important component and it's helpful in the processing of carbohydrates and fats so that you can utilize them for energy. So it really helps you turn fats, carbs, proteins into an energy source. Now biotin, the normal adult doesn't need very much. So you only need about 30 micrograms a day. And you can find biotin in a lot of the foods that you eat. So seeds and nuts, many vegetables like sweet potatoes, broccoli, spinach have high biotin, and then eggs, meat, seafood. So a lot of the foods you might encounter have biotin in them. In addition, biotin is frequently added to many vitamins and supplements. Many people might associate biotin with hair, skin, and nails. So very commonly, biotin can be in hair, skin, and nails vitamins. And those can be used because you want your hair to be thicker, you want your nails to be less brittle. Some of the signs of biotin deficiency although it's not common, are a rash on your face, you can get brittle nails, and you can have hair loss. Therefore, people add biotin into supplements for hair, skin, and nails to try to make these things better. Biotin is often in a prenatal vitamin, and it's also often in a multivitamin. Other things that can have vitamin that you often don't think about can be herbal supplements, greens powders, some type of collagens will have biotin added in, and anything that has mixed components. So whether it's herbs, teas, collagens, greens, you need to be looking at some of the ingredient lists because as we know, supplements are not FDA regulated, and it's really important that you know what you're putting in to your body. What's so interesting is in addition to that 30 micrograms we say that you need as an adult. What does a pregnant person need? 30 micrograms, it's actually the same. You don't have this huge need. Most prenatal vitamins alone will have somewhere between 30 micrograms to 300 micrograms of biotin. So already 300, you can see that that is 10 times the amount that you need. Many hair, skin and nails or greens have levels that far exceed this. So we're talking micrograms, which is smaller than a milligram. And you even see in some hair, skin, and nails, it being so super high. So when I go look at common hair, skin, and nails supplements, what I am seeing is biotin levels of 3,000 micrograms, of 8,000 micrograms, of 10,000 micrograms. So we're getting, you know, up to 10,000% times what you need or 10,000% of your daily intake, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times what you need. So, so far exceeding what it is that you actually need to help you have good hair, skin, and nails or properly take the energy from your food and convert it into a usable form. Why does that matter? Is high biotin harmful? Because high biotin doesn't have side effects, it's not exactly harmful. It's a water-soluble vitamin, and water-soluble vitamins, you urinate out. So because your body doesn't store biotin in it, it is one that we don't worry about you overdosing on. Like, you can actually overdose on some of the fat-soluble vitamins because they can accumulate in your fat. So biotin actually interferes with steroid hormone testing assays. So things like estrogen, progesterone, thyroid hormone, when we are testing these levels, trying to determine where you are in your cycle, biotin interferes with this. The important distinction is that 
your body is making a level of which the lab test is not going to tell you. How these lab tests work is it has to interpret how much estrogen or progesterone is in your blood based on how it binds. And when biotin comes in and binds, depending on the hormone, it can cause falsely high or low results. And so a great example is that sometimes I will have a patient going through IVF and might be taking too much biotin. And she's coming in and I'm doing ultrasounds and measuring follicles. And I know what each mature follicle will make. But if she is taking high levels of biotin, biotin can make your estrogen levels artificially high. And so what can happen is it looks like those eggs are mature at a smaller size because we use both size and estrogen value to determine maturity and when we should do the trigger shot. So if you're taking biotin and it's making your estrogen look falsely high, higher than it actually is in your blood, I don't know you're on that. I'm going to interpret that you have mature eggs and we might make an important decision in an IVF cycle based on that. Similarly, can interfere with thyroid. We might adjust your thyroid medication inappropriately based on biotin interfering. So the list of hormones that can have interference include parathyroid hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, sex hormone binding globulin, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, folate, vitamin B12, ferritin, in addition to all the thyroid hormones. So you can see that across the panel, and that is your thyroid antibodies, your TSH. So the reason why biotin interferes with so many hormone labs is that there's a biotin part of the test reaction process. And this has been present for a really long time and has not been an issue because the amount of dietary biotin that people take is rarely high enough to make a difference. The amount of dietary biotin that most people have is somewhere between 30 to 70 micrograms. But if you are in taking more than one milligram of biotin, which is a thousand micrograms, remember we said 30 micrograms was plenty, then this can cause either falsely low or falsely high results depending on the hormone. It's even not the same across these numerous hormones. So this can be really hard for the diagnosing physician, really frustrating for you as a patient. It can lead to wrong diagnosis, inaccurate treatment, and for the example of IVF, we are making decisions thinking that your body is telling us something that it really might not be. So this is important that we are not taking additional biotin and that we know what supplements we are taking, what's really on the ingredient label. So you should always take a supplement that you are on and be able to look at the ingredient label, what is in it, and you should see biotin and you'll be able to see micrograms, MCGs of how much is in it. And then pay attention when that number is much higher than that 300 microgram amount, which is what I say is typically the top that you'll see in any prenatal vitamin. So biotin is interfering with multiple different steroid hormones. So this can be FSH, estrogen, progesterone, thyroid hormones, parathyroid hormones, cortisol, folate, B12, ferritin, testosterone, and interference with these hormones can make it hard to get to a diagnosis. So if what I think is going on is really going on, we can make false clinical decisions we might think a cyst is making hormones. We might think your body is not making enough testosterone to really have PCOS. So that is my word of caution, is that biotin in a prenatal vitamin should be all the biotin you are taking. If you're trying to get pregnant, you should be taking a prenatal. And if you are taking any additional biotin over what's in your prenatal, that can be too much and that can be causing interference. So unless you have been medically prescribed to take additional biotin, and there is a rare genetic disease called biotinidase deficiency where you might need that, you should not be taking these extra supplements. So there's this idea that more is more and I see patients on a large variety of supplements, but that is more than you need. And I'd really like you to say no and look at all of the supplement ingredients that you have so that you can have the smoothest treatment and diagnosis possible. It's really hard for me because I will see patients with these lab results that are completely uninterpretable. And that makes it hard for you when you know something is wrong and we're trying to get to an answer. So be mindful of what you're taking. Look at your supplements. Stop additional biotin. What's in a prenatal is sufficient. 
And when you're going through IVF cycles, embryo transfer cycles, any treatment cycles, please, please, please pay special attention. And if you have been taking it, stop and tell your treatment team so that they can make the proper decisions. As always, I thank you guys so much for being here and supporting the content. Please share, ask any questions below and subscribe and follow along. Thank you, friends. You can always get more information on the As a Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram for more information.